Just explain what exactly uh, these changes are going to do. Well, the stalking protection orders that come into force tomorrow will enable a force like mine, Sussex Police, to help a victim of stalking almost immediately. So at the moment, if you want to get some sort of form of, of injunction against the stalker, you have to apply to court yourself and go through a very lengthy process. This will allow the police to apply for that um, injunction order and it will stop the perpetrator perhaps from coming near you or approaching you. Plus it will have some positive requirements attached to it as well. So you can actually make sure that the perpetrator perhaps goes to a programme of help if there's one available in your area. Um, of course, there's been some really upsetting and troubling cases reported about, you know, women who've reported people for stalking. Um, nothing's happened, and as a result, they've gone on to even lose their lives. Um, yeah. How important do you think yeah. what the changes well, are now? Well, this is a big step change in the right direction for all of us. Unfortunately, um, I too have been and continue to be a victim of stalking um, with a small group of uh, individuals who seem hell-bent on making my life um, really difficult. In fact, one has a, a custodial sentence at the moment that's been suspended for two years. So, like, like many victims, I really can um, empathise with this. And I know from my own experience, having to go through the civil courts just to get an injunction was a terribly gruesome experience. Um, and the, civil, and the uh, criminal courts, when we originally applied to those, they let me down as well. So I think with these stalking protection orders, this gives the police the opportunity to intervene on behalf of the victim. Uh, if you're a victim of stalking, you often don't even know. And we very often get victims who phone the police and they say, well, I'm not sure. So first of all, we've now um, invented an acronym for F-O-U-R so that the police can easily identify whether it's stalking or harassment. So if the behaviour is fixated, obsessive, unwanted or repeated, then the police officer in the first instance will know that that's stalking. Stalking has a criminal conviction attached to it now, thanks to the new law that came, that's recently come in. And these stalking protection orders are part of that new law as well. So they will allow the police officer, who's identified stalking correctly in the first instance, to put an injunction in place to give the victim some time and respite. And then that also, and really importantly for the victim's point of view, it says to the victim, I hear you, I believe you, and we're going to do something about it. Because very often victims, by the time they report to the police, they've been subjected to over 100 incidents of stalking. Now, if one of those only happens every week, that's nearly two years' worth. So that intense, heightened state of, of alarm that a victim will go through, I cannot underestimate. It's no wonder they come to us with post-traumatic stress disorder and worse. So these protection orders are massively important, and we welcome them in Sussex. And I'm hoping that in Sussex, in my force here tomorrow, we will be one of the first in the country to actually um, issue a couple of these stalking protection orders. You know, I can't help wondering if stalking is one of those things that we've been a bit slow as a society <laughs> to really appreciate what an impact it has on people who are the victims of it. You were saying there about your own sort of lived experience of what happened. Can you kind of describe to our viewers about what it feels like to be a victim of stalking? Well, at first you don't realise what's happening. Um, for me, because I'm a public figure, you kind of expect a lot of noise anyway around you. You know, you're not everybody's best friend and people tend to be quite vocal against you. But this particular individual was uh, relentless. I mean, he was fixated, he's, he was obsessive. He, he emailed um, lots of people, he went across social media, he printed stuff about me. Um, uh, calling me a paedophile, a prostitute, um, I was accused of murder, of child sex abuse, you name it. And he then professionally tried to attack me by uh, contacting um, professional boards that I sit on and people I work with. And it was just relentless and there were pages and pages across social media. He was then able to connect with others of a similar ilk in my county, so there's four of them now, and one of them I'm in court with next month. Um, and this has been going on for nearly eight years. So as a, you know, as a victim, and I'm, I, I suppose I'm one of the, the luckier ones, because some of the victims I meet have just had the most awful experiences. People, their, their perpetrators have been put in prison and they know they're coming out soon and they're terrified for their lives. I had one woman held my hands and she said, he's coming out next year, Katie, I know he's going to kill me, you've got to help me. So you're absolutely right, this is an invidious crime and I think what we're seeing is just the tip of the iceberg. 
because, by, as I said, by the time a victim comes forward, they often don't know they're being stalked. They don't understand the difference, and the difference is really important because that will determine what response the police give. So if the police correctly identify stalking in the first instance, they will then go down the proper route to gather the intelligence and build the case file that they need to prosecute that individual. If they don't recognise it, then the victim doesn't get supported and doesn't get help. And this is why these protection orders are so vital. They are a step in the right direction. But... There is one thing police forces need to do across the country. We need to make sure that not just the police, but all our criminal justice partners understand that if those orders are breached, there is a consistent response to that breach and that that person is then dealt with effectively. Because at the moment, as the inspection that I carried out last year, I commissioned Her Majesty's Inspectorate to do an inspection of Sussex Police and their response to stalking. And they made local recommendations for us, but they made some really important ones nationally for policing. And one of the things that they really discovered was that the police are not doing proper risk assessments on victims in that first instance. So we're trialling a pilot here in uh, Sussex with Surrey and Cheshire Police at the moment, looking at a new risk assessment for victims. We found they got one if they were in a, a domestic abuse situation, but a third of our victims aren't. They could be stalked by someone who's a stranger. OK, thank you. And if they don't get that risk assessment, then... Thank you so much for talking so powerfully about this important story and also sharing your own experience thank you. as well. While we've got you, um, it was reported this week that Boris Johnson's planning to review the role of police and crime commissioners uh, like yourselves. Yes. Do you think the Prime Minister's committed to keeping <clears> you in a job? Yes. Absolutely, and we welcome this review. And I and my colleagues earlier this week, we had a general meeting and the policing minister came and the cabinet secretary was there. And we asked them both about the review and they said actually they're doing a review across all government departments and we welcome this review because they're also looking at potentially how they might expand our role into the criminal justice system. So give us potentially further responsibilities.